I'm blind, but I can see. My name is Eddie Cowles. Guys, and this is Justin Brown, and I wish I could not see anymore. And we are talking about Daredevil 2003. That's right. We talked about the TV show, the Netflix show, and how much we loved it several times back in the past. But now we're watching the movie from back in the past. And uh, just to Justin's point, it hurt. It hurt a lot. Hold on. Nigga got notes for this one. <laughs> Yo, I saw this opening weekend in LA. I saw it at the Chinese theater because oh, we were looking at colleges. Uh-huh. I think I was looking at, like, uh, looking at UCLA or something. And uh, we saw this and uh, it was it was bad. It was so crazy because I think this was the first movie where Colin Farrell was in his Irish accent. So yeah. I was also like, this nigga's Irish. But then he kept rubbing that fucking dart nipple thing on his head. <laughs> and he was almost having like orgasms. I was just like, and then every he's wearing that leather suit, like outfit. I'm like, what is going on? Well, he, he's just like, I want a costume. And then he just comes out with this leather jacket. I'm like, nigga, what is this? <laughs> it was crazy. What is this? And it's like, anytime it's like, I want a costume. Okay. Put him in some leather. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> well, everybody's in leather. Holy yeah. fuck. I mean, Ben Affleck's, ben Affleck's suit was crazy, dude. He must have been fucking hot as fuck. <laughs> That's why he's the devil. Because he's literally burning up in that thing. <laughs> it looks so uncomfortable. Yo, when he took that off at the beginning after that first oh, fucking yeah. thing, that, bro. You're like, that has to smell so bad. Yo, I was just like, oh, the sweat that's in there. And just like the bo of that thing, oh, he yeah. has to he has to hose that motherfucker <laughs> down <laughs> immediately. And then on the top of that, you know, he wasn't wearing no shirt underneath, so he's going yeah. bare chest on that. So them zippers and shit are really not feeling good against his skin. And yeah. think about his balls, son. His balls are all chafed up. Uh-huh. There's a little hair getting stuck to the leather. Oh man. Oh gosh. That's that's. And the whole time you're wondering, like, how does he make money if he takes everything pro bono and shit? Yo, and I'm just how I after this film, I would never want to do a superhero movie ever again, too. <laughs> I know. Ben Affleck looked crazy. And, you know, like everything I felt like everything about this movie, the creators were like, we got him with this shit. They go, they go their minds are going to fucking explode. Like the opening credits, just the way they designed. I'm like, oh, these niggas were like filling themselves like, oh, this is just from from front of credits these motherfuckers going to be wetting their pants. Yo, these motherfuckers are just like, yo, you like Blade? <laughs> we'll take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, Mark Steven Johnson, he was the writer, director. He was definitely like, oh, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. And he's like, you ain't seen the superhero that you kill somebody. I mean, when Daredevil, <laughs> when, when that dude got killed in the subway, I was like, oh, this is wild. And first of all, it's like, so he got like basically cut in half. His upper body was like in the middle of the trap his, uh, track. His lower body was on the other side. I I don't know if people don't understand the physics of of uh, how things work, but also how a subway car works because they took his fully attached upper bo- body, well, a detached upper body, which was completely untouched, yeah. and they did put it in the body bag. So it's just like, so you're telling me the train just clean cut him in half. Like it's a goddamn Ginzu blade, and then <laughs> didn't roll over the t- his t- upper half. It was just chilling out there. But yep. that's not even, that's besides the point because we have a flashback where you know how Daredevil. The comes whole movie's to be. a flashback. Well, that too. The whole that's- fucking movie, like except for the last twenty minutes, the whole goddamn thing's a flashback. Yeah, But his father. So after he gets fucking um. I don't know, motor oil splashed in his eyes. <laughs> Dude, uh, the blind transition, uh, that, that was the only good effect was like the, when the 
this the nerves in his eyes went out. Oh yeah, and it connects to every yeah, little thing. That was the only thing that like looked good. But you know what they movie. immediately follow it with? They immediately follow it with this. Maddie, I talked to the doctor and I'm blind. Uh, how did you know? Because nigga, I can't see. That's how I know. <laughs> I can't fucking see. I'm staying out this window and I'm just listening because I can't fucking see. That's how I know I'm blind, motherfucker. <laughs> but then it was also like though, then all the sounds when he's in the hospital room, and then he can see like X-ray visions and shit. So I'm like, so he can see. Yeah. He, he has so he's an uh, uh, echolocation basis. Yeah. Because then, when, like later on, when he's in the rain, he can see Electra and be like, oh, this is young Jennifer Garner. Yes, please. He's but like, it's like, I'm going to fuck this woman and then leave her. <laughs> he's I'm a very. And marry her and then leave this woman for another starlet. I mean, he, oh, well, yeah, that was. Yeah, that's that, what I meant. Yeah, that, that was real. But, um, <laughs> we gonna have kids and I'm gonna say fuck all that. Well, you know what's crazy is like, I think he, I think he was with J-Lo. They did this movie. He broke up with J-Lo. Then they started dating not mm -hmm. too long after. Because that. he couldn't bring a Puerto Rican home. Until 2022. <laughs> probably his, uh, probably those people who, who weren't happy with a Puerto Rican coming in the house are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, it checks out. So about time, man. Mm -hmm. So about time, but um, yeah, I mean Ben Affleck would look crazy in this. He, he <laughs> looked he was... like she was a fucking fly girl, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. Like, I don't. I'm not obviously. I'm not uh physically attracted to men. At least there's some men that I'll shout out to. But Ben Affleck, I just don't get it. I don't get the appeal at all. He looks so pale, especially with those fucking blue gray eyes that they contact yeah. lenses they had him in and shit. And then that outfit. With him in the, the vacant face that he had in that fucking outfit, he looked like he was definitely into some BDSM. Like oh, he was, yeah. he was just waiting for a dick to punish him. Oh, you know no. what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. He's like, I'm Irish, I'm Catholic. Punish me, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't we kept seeing the priest? I'm a bad, bad altar boy. I don't know. I went Scottish there, but it doesn't matter. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, it was really weird. Because also because he's so tall, he yeah. like it, it didn't it did not work. He just no. looked he looked like a monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the makeup and stuff looked crazy. I mean, the dad in the flashback when he's a kid and the dad had the fake cauliflower ear and like that terrible New York accent. You could be a doctor or a lawyer, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> did he go you to the be Mickey? anything you want, Matt? But don't be like your dad. Don't be like a fight act. <laughs> also can we go to the okay this is another example of like some marvel movies just having some evil ass bullies because the fucking kid from the sopranos just trying to beat up this poor kid like, and yeah, then they go, adrian what the fuck are you doing and then they go adrian aj oh i thought you said adrian oh, yeah, yeah like, that's a senior, uh, the sister but um i get what you're saying adrian but it's sister, actually. yeah oh yeah that's right but then uh i was just like they were meaner when he was blind I was just like, yo, who are these kids? Yo, what kind of monumental piece of fucking shit are you to do seek out a fight with a blind kid? Mm -hmm. And then the fact that you lost, I'm going to give, I'm just going to give you that one because you already lost by fucking trying to fight a blind kid. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? That's and so then crazy. after he slaps up fucking AJ with a guy with his, his little stick, the other two niggas and they were niggas. Then going <laughs> openly attacking him. It's like, guys, what are we doing here? He's blind. Yep. I mean, this movie was out of control. I mean, this this movie uh, posited that he became blind because like uh, a forklift fucking stabbed into like, a barrel of toxins after he ran away because he saw his dad uh, working for a gangster. A yeah, beating up some, some helpless dude or whatever the fuck. So... Brandon, I don't know if you realize, but if that was uh, that was what happened, which this is a change in the story, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, if that's if that's the backstory going on with this, do you understand that? Why would he have to worry about mobsters and you know going back and and fighting because they could have sued the oh they would have got a lot of money, city, yeah. a ton of money. This young white child is blind 
because they he op- he walked into an open fucking construction yard down at the docks. Nobody told him to get out of there. And then and then by somebody stabbing a fucking barrel of fucking toxic waste with a with a fucking um with a with a, a forklift. Yeah. Now this kid is blind. He, yeah, that shit shot to his money. face like a high C uh, juice box. No, <laughs> they they shot it shot in his face like a bukkake. That's what happened. <laughs> I mean, he is a disobedient son, like we said. He's like, I mean, all to me, I mean, daddy. <laughs> he 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 does spend a lot of time in the church after this. Uh, <laughs> and his apartment looked very dark. Like they like they did a lot of spanking and coming on those dark walls. You know what I mean? So there's I, nothing. Cra- this movie was crazy. Bro, so I, I, I'm gonna go dark right here. Um, I told you I went to Catholic school, right? Yeah, yeah. So one of my the priests in our school disappeared and got sent to another school. Okay. And you want to know why? His name was Father Angelo Ditta. I don't give a fuck. I'm putting it out there. He's a fucking rapist. But Father Angelo Ditta was apparently getting foot rubs from kids and daredeviling in their face. Crazy. Great. I don't know. I don't know anybody that this actually yeah. happened to, but that was, that was the thing. That was the thing. <laughs> Cause my mom actually said, wait, did he ever, I'm just like, no, ma, he know better. They don't do that shit to black kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you going to try to what in my face? Nope. <laughs> well, it, it's just like, you know, they go on the missions if they want to deal with the darkies. Then they, 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 they ain't fucking do it after no black kid in the suburbs. Yeah. They don't want uh, that fucking smoke. My daddy was in my life. He, he didn't want that fucking business. <laughs> now you, Brandon, if they caught your ass. <laughs> Stop. But now, <laughs> yeah, like I told you we're going to get dark. But um. So you know, like the whole uh, daredevil, the lore is like the kid was was uh, like you know headed home and whatever, and then there was actually a car accident, and then the car accident, yes. toxic spill went in his yep. face and everything like that. But you know what also happened at that same t- uh, accident, correct? No. So it's rumored that uh, he uh, that uh, Matt Murdock was carrying uh, the turtles. turtles. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the turtles went into the sewer. I've heard and then, about like, that. So the that. creation of the Ninja Turtles is actually is attributed to Daredevil because a writer really loved this character and he created um, uh, the turtles based off of that. So he tried to kind of you know make that story uh, one, and so it's technically part of their origin story. Interesting. Okay, you learn something new every day, baby. Mm-hmm. Meeting popcorn, niggas teaching shit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but I wish we could have taught this production crew how to do a better movie. Because, I mean, when Matt is over his dad, who just got beat to death because he was inspired by his son, no longer to fix fights and shit. And yeah. then Matt's just like, <laughs> and he squeezes the rose and then blood just starts gushing. I was like, get, fuck you. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what kind of thorns insane. are those? <laughs> those? What kind of thorns are those on roses? <laughs> but I was also just like, why is this so dark? I remember, I think, even as a teenager, seeing this movie, be like, Jesus Christ, this is what? Well, what's well Brandon, it has to be thark, dark, 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 uh, dark, because the kid goes from getting fucking, uh, what you call it, uh, toxic waste splashed into his eyes to him on the on the fucking edge of buildings doing cartwheels the very yeah. next day. Like, you know, <laughs> there's only one way to go. He's obviously suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> It's like now we got to kill his dad and, you know, we can really get this thing going. But also <laughs> his dad was 42 years old. Right. Yes. And all of a sudden he gets back in the boxing and he starts beating all these people and he has this match. And there's just like, hey, I want you to take a dive. Right. This 42 year old man against a young man would 100 percent be an underdog. Yes. Why? Why are you taking it? If he's taking a dive it should only be for like a championship match. Right. And, but it has to be a match where they thought that he would win. They would make zero fucking money off of fucking, uh, what the devil, the, the devil of hell's kitchen, whatever the hell they were uh, calling him. Uh, if he takes a dive because he's the underdog already. 
Oh, fair point. It, it makes zero sense. Yeah. So this, basically, this is written by somebody who clearly didn't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously, any motherfucker who gambled one day in his life knows, like, wait a second, that's not lucrative. <laughs> yeah. He, ha- he has to. He he literally has to be the favorite. Uh, he well, no, no. Well, I mean, no. If he's an underdog. And he would have to win as the underdog. Yes. So you go to the guy who's the favorite. Yeah. 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 You bet against him. Yeah. Knowing that he's going to win, but then he, that you essentially have to fix the other guy. Exactly. So, so it's, basically, it's backwards. So basically when it comes down to it, it's just like either this guy's just a bad fucking gangster or everybody probably, in this world are, are complete and other imbeciles. He's probably a bad gangster because Kingpin, who, like, you know, because of the Rose, we later did attribute that to Michael Clark Duncan's crazy ass interpretation of this oh character. Um, Fucking Green you know, Mile is in this shit, y'all. Because <laughs> Kingpin eventually takes over. So he had to obviously take out his boss that told him to kill Matt Murdock's dad and stuff. But I was just like, I, I hate, hated this. Um, there was a little fun uh, Stan, Stan Lee cameo that yeah. I thought was like, I was like, oh, okay, that's probably the best thing that we're going to get here. Um, that opening courtroom scene, though, with the with the Greek dude was insane. Uh, yeah, was well, like he just he just threatened this lawyer, right? Everybody, <laughs> like, yeah. How how was he not detained? Held in contempt? Like, yeah. what's going on? And then later on, when he's going to get justice, I mean, Matt also threatens this nigga too. He's yeah. like, I hope justice you find justice before justice finds you or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'd yeah. be like. Hey, uh, judge, can we can we make sure we head down the record? And yeah, because he, like it sounds like this guy's gonna murder me. <laughs> <laughs> then what happens the next night? He's fucking <laughs> killed, right? Wait, actually, hold on. This is something I I also need to go back and talk about. Mac Murdoch's father was a boxer, right? Yes, he got beat up by those guys, but he got killed by a punch to the face mm-hmm, by Keep. One punch mm-hmm. from Kingpin is all it took. Just saying. Um, also, when he gets home, and then uh, when he gets home, he, uh, you know, he's getting no, he's getting ready for work for a court or whatever. He puts on music and he turns it up, but and he turns it up all the way to the max. But if he has heightened sense of hearing, wouldn't that just destroy his ears? Wouldn't why wouldn't he could just keep it at like a normal level and he'd be totally fine to hear it? He like his ears would be way too sensitive, especially considering the chiming of fucking um, you know, the, you know, just loud noises yeah. are bothering him. You know, <laughs> yeah. turning up the radio all the way to his peak is not going to be something that Matt Mar- Murdoch does. I mean, it is wild. I think you said this like last time we met up that Daredevil's main kryptonite is a pot. An empty pot and a wooden spoon. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he's in trouble. <laughs> so you're right. Like, why would he be blasting music if, like, later on, like, because for some reason they're the fucking biggest uh, um, piano organ, organ, yeah, organ in the world. How and big was just, that fucking organ? Then, it was like it was like the eight stories tall. Yeah. And the bulls that just rubbing his nipple and hitting the bells and shit. I'm just like, what is going on, man? He made he was me so, miss. He was so fucking stiff in this film. He looked like he he looked like that costume was uncomfortable, and he had to oh, take yeah. the shit. De- I was gonna say that he definitely <laughs> he looked. He always was at a different speed because he needed to take a shit, and he was stuck in that fucking leather. Yeah, when he was running, he was stiff as fuck. He was so fucking stiff. <laughs> the only I, like the only running. That's worse than this is fucking Ezra Miller in the in the flash. <laughs> like that that that's this running is like top level of being just shitty running. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote down so Daredevil can fly because there was parts where he was like spitting through the air and shit. And just the way they said Daredevil, it's not like it is in the comics where like you believe these fucking whips are allowed to swing around. Mm-hmm. It just looks so bad. And yeah. again, Ben Affleck's outfit, I don't know why he agreed to do that. He looked fucking crazy. He looked like a backup dancer in a Janet Jackson music video. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a vigilante of justice, man. Brandon, 
This nigga was sleeping in a sensory deprivation fucking coffin. Like, who the fuck is he, Joe Rogan? Like, what is <laughs> happening in <laughs> this film? There is so much. There is so much to go off in this film because this is cuckoo fucking bananas bat shit crazy. It's all over the fucking place. And then he he sits up in the coffin. And he's just like, oh, shit, this girl got killed. I heard it. Lay back down. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Lay in wa- sleep in water, nigga. Like what is happening in this film? Well, it's also like, does he only work for a few hours a day? Because I thought Daredevil worked like from like 9 p.m. to to you know to dawn and shit. He's getting into that too when it's still dark dark out. Yeah. He's like at 3 a.m. Oh, I'll call on a night. He's like, you only been working for four hours. Yeah, but I did my part. <laughs> I mean, this movie is filled like a horror film with the yeah. sepia tones and shit. It's very fucked up. It's it's crazy. And then it just gets crazier. I mean, like the whole Electra, uh, Matt Murdock meet cute is fucking weird. Oh, my God. Mom, mom, there are two. There's a man and a woman fighting in the playground <laughs> and kids are celebrating this. It felt like I was watching Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And her eyes look crazy with the green. She looked like a demon. <laughs> that was insane. What she was wearing, she looks like it. All of this. I mean, but yeah. that's all also like the early 2000s where it was just like, oh, let's dress women like they're fucking. I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know. H&M Cabbage Patch Dolls or some yeah, shit. Like they look nuts. Nuts. It's like also don't eat ever. Like ever. I want you yeah. as skinny as possible so we can fit you in all this leather. Yeah. There was a lot of leather. Um, I did write down the after uh, Daredevil beats up all those gangsters and uh, allows the the Italian gangster dude to, or a Greek gangster dude to get his legs, you know, fucked up on yeah. the train. Um, Joe Pantolino plays this like reporter yeah. who's on the trail of the identity of a Daredevil, and he somehow like has the intuition to toss his, his cigar on the ground, and then it lights up these double D's. And I'm just like, why would he do? Why would Matt Murdock spend time doing that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, got to throw my calling card down. And also, like, <laughs> is is he a fucking graffiti artist? What? How did he even know how to do that? He's like, wait a second, guys. Double D's for Diamond Dick. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, that's so insane, dude. Yeah. And how would he know that someone would actually light it up at that exact spot? Like somebody's randomly just hanging out in the subway waiting for their train to come. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> sudden like, you know, they, they you know, I don't know, they drop their cell phone and they're fuck and, and just a spark. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're on fire because they were standing in the middle of a fucking Yeah, thing. man, it's so irresponsible. I mean, for all he knows, it it could be days later and there's like a fucking minivan with a family underneath that spot. And then like the daughter's like, oh, oh daddy, Brandon, I have a match. Wait, wait, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, it's in the subway. Why is there a minivan? The subway, <laughs> you dumb nigga. You, <laughs> I know this movie is far fetched and all over the place, but let's not go fucking crazy. Or we got minivans in the fucking subways, and little girls are playing with matches. <laughs> like, what's happening, Brandon? That was fucking nuts. And you know, there's a there's a minivan under there. It's like, what? <laughs> that was the craziest fucking thing, nigga. You live in New York City. What are you talking about? There is no subway platform where there are minivans present. <laughs> <laughs> are you done yelling at me? <laughs> Look before you leap, motherfucker. <laughs> what you I always just leap. <laughs> I, mean, I, can't, I can't keep looking forward because oh, I get God. scared. Oh, uh, boy. You just made me laugh so hard. Okay, l- let's uh, talk about Kingpin. No, no. Why did he you... nut after he killed his two security <laughs> guards? He's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, Kingpin is insane. Michael Clark Duncan was crazy at this. Yes, he was. Like when he's whispering shit, I was like, yo, nah, this is that insane. wasn't Michael. That wasn't Kingpin. That was Michael Clark. That was Green Mile, nigga. That was Green Mile. This entire film. We can't respect this kingpin. That's Green Mile. 
This is Green Mile if he actually did do it. I mean, this that's so bad. <laughs> but this movie was insane. Like, because all he did was stay in that weird room looking out the window. Of course. <laughs> I'm just like, what does he just does his operation just run itself at this point? I, I know mean, he had that one white not guy. Going to parties. Yeah, but the white guy um with the glasses, that's like yeah. uh his uh his right hand man because this uh, is Steven Dorf. Yeah. It's not Steven Dorf though. No, but it, he he it, it, he would very much reminds me of a character from Blade, like uh, a, a henchman from Blade. Yeah, so it's just like it's so bad. It's just so bad. And then he looks ridiculous just because the, the way they the way they just lit this whole movie, everyone looks terrible. Yeah. Everyone looks bad. Ben Affleck looks terrible. Yeah. Like he, he looks pale as fuck. Mm-hmm. He looks kind of like a crack at times when he's all sweaty because she takes off the mask and shit. He looks cra- like he looks like a drug addict. Yeah. Um, and then I was just wondering, how did he get so they never explained how he has the money to afford that loft. When he's working pro bono all the time. Yep. They no, never... I, think, I think that's his dad's apartment. His dad was broke. Listen, why people were barely were able to, uh, why people were able to afford shit even though they were broke. That's and true. back in that's the day, true. come on now. That's true. But it, I don't know, man. I'm just, just like, what's going on there? Um, and then they had a terrible exposition with the girls with the voicemails. Matt, you know, I mean, if you can't commit, you gotta just tell somebody. I Man, I miss it so much. Blah blah blah. You're just like I've been waiting around for you for three months, hoping that you'd open up to me, but you're not, and I can't do it anymore, Matt. You need to go away. (laughs) I should have slept with you when I had the chance. (laughs) This nigga got all these pills. He has so many pills. His doctors are never like, hey, blind dude. Why are you? Why do you need all these? <laughs> Yo, why is your blood? Why is your blood just packed full of perks? Twenty four seven. You okay? What's up with your back? Why you got cuts all over your back? Am I giving you the bloody back, sir? What's happening? <laughs> What's with all the bruises? You're a lawyer. What are you doing? Are you falling out of windows and just <laughs> on your back? What's happening with your life? I think we're going to send you a hold a home uh, a care aid because you obviously cannot navigate the world. Yeah. Matt, time to get a dog. Like, what is going on? Oh yeah, true, true. But it's, it's all yeah. It's very much like, what are you doing to require so much maintenance and shit? But it's also like, what happens in that tank if he gets locked in there? Oh, he him done. Him downstairs. <laughs> he ain't got no cell phone in there. Like he's literally sleeping in a sleep. I, I mean, I'm sorry, in a what they call a sensory deprivation coffin. Yeah, he's sleeping in the sensory deprivation tank. So it's like a, a float tank. It's like, oh yeah, that, that's cool. I, I bet he's seeing all sorts of great visions. But you know, and I I, I know why they're doing it because it's like because probably all the sounds of the city keep him up at night. Yeah, but um. Yeah, bro, you going to die. And nobody's going to find you. And you can run and tell that, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody, this is bad. This is really bad. John Favreau's in this. Yep. You know, it's, yeah, it was weird. And then the whole mustard in the coffee bit, I was like, what kind of what kind of humor is this? Yeah. Yeah, juvenile and like the music it was kind of corny and then again Ben Affleck just looks so fucking pale but also sick mm-hmm. and a little pink it was weird um uh oh Colin Farrell when he was walking through the airport I don't know why that scene was still in this film I was just like Jesus Christ what it, it was very room-esque like yes. we did not see, like he's coming up the stairs with his arms spread out, like I'm just like, what is going on? I'm ascending, and he's just, and then you know they were taking the, he t- he puts a pen, a toothpick out there, yep. anything else, a, uh, a fucking paper clip in his mouth, like what's what, what is this? And then he does a little swing with the paper clip into the woman's neck, bro. I like, mean, what's yeah. going on? He like he's just killing people for no reason. 
And eventually he would get caught because he's the only bald niggas with a dot bullseye on his head that yeah. people seem to be dying around. I'm like, listen, there are certain things where you're just like, ah, uh, this motherfucker's part of some dumb shit. Motherfucker got a tattoo on his face, like a full face tattoo, like a demon, or a motherfucker walking around with a self-inflicted wound in the shape <laughs> of something on the middle of his fucking forehead. That's a telltale sign. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's not good, man. Also, like the like you said, the room it's like room esque. The coffee uh scene where they have the mute cute between Mad and Electra was mm. so bad. Within a minute, she comes inside, has somehow already got coffee and sat down. Yeah. By the time he gets up from his seat after already have been there to get some mm-hmm. sugar, you know what I mean? Like, is it continuity? Yeah. It was just terrible. Yeah. And this, um. And then also, like, like <laughs> Matt was kind of, like, sexually uh, harassing her, right? I mean... Like, when he was he in pursuit did... of her and he, like, hold, he like grabs her and shit, I was like, yo. Yeah, he, he was just like, wait a second. He just, I mean, but then again, it's the early 2000s. It was, you know, it was oh, the yeah, time, right. baby. Mm-hmm. It was the time. You can't say no. <laughs> not to Ben Affleck. <laughs> Come on. Not to, not to Ben Affleck. And you know what? When we get to my place, we're going to play some R. Kelly because everything is going to be all right in the early 2000s. <laughs> These are wholesome people that would never do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. When he followed her into the playground, which why was she there? Um, exactly. <laughs> he's just hanging out in the playground. Is like nigga. <laughs> She's going to take some kids. Um, <laughs> and now my, it, it's funny, but like I guess at the same time, it's not as threatening for a woman to be hang. And this is today as well uh, for a woman to be just hanging out in the uh, playground, like reading a book or something like that. Yeah. But like I remember one time I went, you know. I was in the playground, Jackson was playing, and I'm just uh, kind of just hanging out there. And this white woman was looking at me from across, the, from across. And like, I know she was thinking to herself, what is this man doing in the fucking playground? Mm. And like, and because there were no, you know, straight up black ass kids like me in the playground, I don't think she could tell that Jackson was my son until uh. like I walk, I would, I would, I was, I would, and it would happen to me pretty often where I could see people looking at me. I'm like, all right, I got to get up and go towards Jackson and, and talk to him. So they know that I belong here. But like, I, I see other guys making, uh, doing the same thing. Yeah. So it's like, if Ben Affleck was just walking in the playground, everybody's fucking alert should have went up, especially him playing. I'm blind shit. Nah, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So somebody would have beat his ass in there. Yeah. Niggas would have been like, he put too much uh too much gel in his hair for him to be exactly. blind. Exactly. Like you got too many a, chemicals in your hair to be blind, nigga. Yeah, it's a specific style, motherfucker. You can't replicate that every time. Mm-hmm. You look a little bit more disheveled. Why aren't you drawers outside your pants <laughs> like Quail Man? <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be hilarious though if he fucking just halfway through the movie revealed that he could see all along. <laughs> Like a goddamn psychopath. Oh boy, that'd be nuts. That'd be but even nuts. Oh, so they're positing that because <laughs> of the supersonic hearing and shit, that he can like anticipate bullets and shit. Like bullseye, he was he he throws broken glass at him, two handfuls, and Daredevil mm-hmm. just keeps flipping in the right time to avoid well, all. Brandon, you're you're talking about the wrong stuff because. He threw broken glass that he just kicked out the glass, and all those shards were in the exact same piece. <laughs> he just grabbed them. So he's just like, and he just, ha, ha, ha. he catches them like they're a and stack of pizzas. He's like, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> <laughs> like what? His hands would be annihilated, bro. How in the fuck <laughs> did he become? The fucking can't miss. How did he become the Steph Curry of throwing <laughs> shit? Yeah. And like, and he don't miss. And Daredevil's the first one to make him miss. Like that whole thing was absolutely absurd. Also, let's talk about the fact that when Electra thinks that uh, he killed um, uh, her father. Killed her father, yeah. Crazy. Because Nick, 
if you look at the science of it, you 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 have to know that it's not him. Because for once, yes. he's engaged with another person. And also, his back was to you when your dad got killed. So there's literally no way that he should get off of that. Uh, that he should that he should have been able. Yeah, I know the cats in the back here causing ruckus. That he should have been able to throw that like a mile away and kill your father. Like, w- were you just like, like that's stupid? Then also, she starts fighting Daredevil, and she, and I know part of it. They're just like, well, he wasn't really trying to fight her, so that's the only reason she was able to contend with him. But then. He she stabs her stabs Daredevil. He, with her side. he yeah, yeah. W- with the sigh and whatnot. Now Electra's supposed to be a badass. She's supposed to be a pretty formidable fighter, right? Yeah. Then she goes hand to hand combat with fucking Bullet Head over here, <laughs> and she gets her ass waxed. Yeah, yeah. He fucks her up, and like, and, and impales her with her own sigh. Yeah. Why is this guy able to beat her when she's on a level where she can do the flippy shit just as much as their daredevil? And she's supposed she's to be a lady. like a martial artist. Because she's a woman, Justin. Yeah, Too right. early 2000s, baby. This got vagina. <laughs> it's fucking so stupid. Also, in her fucking house, Brandon, in she her house. sandbags hanging. Yeah, and she's where got are evanescence they hanging from? Loop. <laughs> she's got evanescence on loop, nigga. She's like, my daddy died. You know what to do, butlers. <laughs> they set up that room for her. They're like, I need you. I need you to install boards all over the roof so that I can hang sandbags from them and stab them. That's <laughs> insane. And then you have to clean them up. And then we're going to do it again. Yep. <laughs> and... I remember this movie theaters, like they were blasting that fucking song. Bring me home, you know, and save me. Ever because every well, before that you have the sad Evanescent song at the wedding. And he's like, she's like, I have to go. And he's like, stay. And I was like, these are terrible performances. Yeah. But then you have that like hardcore, like everyone's getting ready for battle, shit put on all their leather. Very matrixy. Yeah. And Evanescence blew up because of this shit. Mm-hmm. They were like fucking yes. They were probably more successful than the movie was. Oh, oh yeah, movie. I would say so. At, uh, no, no. I still because say this, this, song. this movie did make uh, you know a hundred million dollars over its budget. Okay. So I mean, technically, it was a success. You know, the, you know that group. I don't. I don't think they did much after that one song. Yeah. I, right now, they're not okay right now. I'm pretty sure they're not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that dude is still living off that one song. Save me! <laughs> I love the part. Yeah, um, so do I. Okay, so a little bit of trivia about this. Uh, ben Affleck was virtually blind as he had to wear heavy-duty content lenses, which blocked mm-hmm. out most of his vision. So that's why he had that slight jaw vacant look in his face uh-huh. the whole time. Which is absolutely terrible. I wonder if he had to wear the contacts under the mask. That'd be insane. <laughs> That'd be so crazy. <laughs> oh my god! You can't see it. Eddie has a leather leather uh, layer on top of that, and then on top of that, he has to fucking act alongside of Jennifer Gardner. Mm-hmm. She's not. I mean, they're not great. They're not great. No. She does look great in this movie because I was kind of oh, so. uh, for me, I was kind of like, okay, like I can go. Uh, it's her uh she has a cute smile yeah but I, <clears throat> I think you know again this is the early 2000s where uh where women ha- had to uh starve themselves mm. uh I, I i i don't she doesn't look healthy in this film uh like i i, I mean no one much, did yes you right. look like they were having bad sushi every day on set <laughs> And just for some reason, because it's like rich, they thought that like it was like it's meant to make you vomit and yeah, poop they, out all yeah. your insides. They look flush from vomiting. That I think yeah. that that's a really good take. That's a really good take on it. Everyone looked like they vomit just had flush. The, everyone looked like they just taking the huge, huge uh, butt explosion, and just were worried about the next one. Okay. It was bad. I mean, this and supposedly they had a good time on set. Um, well, I mean, it, of course they had a good time on set. He fucked a child in that one. <laughs> what he fucked a child in that woman oh 
I that, that was scramble, buddy. That sounded weird at first. <laughs> because as I was saying it, I realized that sounds so fucking ridiculous. Oh, you fucked a child in that one. <laughs> Save me! <laughs> Control, man. Uh, apparently, apparently on set, Jeffrey Gardner accidentally kicked Ben Affleck so hard that he briefly blacked out. Oh, Ben Affleck. Imagine this been a point of contention when they were like up to their divorce. He's like, I know you did that on purpose. I know you knocked me the fuck out on purpose, Jen. You were drunk, Ben. It never happened. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Apparently, Matt Damon turned down the lead role as he didn't have enough faith in the script or director. That must have been a sad thing for Ben Affleck to hear. Yeah. He's like, man, yeah. Yeah, my best friend. He said, oh, oh. Save me. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently Elijah Dushku was considered for the role of Electra, as were um Penelope Cruz, Samba Hayek, Natalie Portman, Lucy Liu, Jessica Alba, Katie Holmes, uh Nev Campbell, and Nev Campbell. I could have Katie done Holmes Penelope been Cruz. Terrible. Huh? Katie, Katie Holmes would have been terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I would I could see Jessica Alba or um because she was already doing that uh one show. The shoot where she's like, oh, it was like a was it on CW or UPN? Dark Angel. It was called Dark Angel or something, I think. I don't know. I didn't know um, she had a show. Yeah, I don't even know Penelope, her from movies. Young Some Penelope Cruz could have could have worked. That Listen, could have been sexy. Young Penelope Cruz could have been everything. Would have mm. been everything for me. Mm. She was it sexy. could be Penelope Cruz now. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. She yeah. was great. Mm-hmm. Delicioso. Mm-hmm. Um so mira, apparently, mira. <laughs> so apparently, there's a director's cut of this with Coolio in it. I th- I was just talking. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wait, so you didn't see that? I haven't seen that. I watched it. Yeah, Coolio's the guy that he's that he's um uh, uh defending, defending, right? Yeah, all about the Kate. It's Coolio. Okay. Oh, so yeah, that wasn't in your version. Oh, so I just I'm the one who watched the, the director's cut. So I that's why my uh version of this was two hours. Yeah, my yeah, mine was about two hours. No, mine was two hours and 13 minutes. Uh, oh, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Because I was watching, I was watching the time. I was like, when is this over? And Coolio is in it, and Coolio is fucking nuts. It's not a good performance. No. Damn. After he gets the uh, after uh, they get Coolio off, you know, in the big case, whatever, Coolio hugs Foggy like forty times. He's like, "Oh man, you my brother. Oh, oh man, anytime you come up to one hundred and twenty fifth Street, you should come and see me. I'll get you some ribs. Oh man, I need to give you another." I'm just like, Ugh. "Look at this nigga, just nigga jigging all over the screen." And they just kept getting paid in food, and that food probably wasn't even more trustworthy and shit. Yeah, come on. Be like, I, I got to poison these white boys before they keep no. coming back. That's why. That's why he looks so flush. He's eating fucking immigrant food that he's never had before. He ain't ready for that. He ain't ready no, for them no. herbs and spices. No, no, not at all. His 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 stomach can't take the acids. No, exactly. He, him shitting all over the place. Him His his shit all downstairs, down his leg, in his shoes, <laughs> it's in his socks, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Speaking of smell, this nigga sniffs Electra, right? When he first meets her at the coffee shop, right? He like sniffs her. Yeah, man. This nigga was a creep. Listen, bro. That's one thing. I do, guys, if you're out here and you're a young man and you're out here trying to talk to these women and wow and woo them, rather, don't smell them. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to go over well. If you get close to a woman, you're <laughs> that, that is not a compliment. You are going to come across as the creepiest man that they ever experienced in their entire life. Do not <laughs> smell women. The only good time you can smell women if it's like you're dead at a club or something like that, and you're dancing with a girl, and then you like mm-hmm. you know you let the waff come up and hit you, be like, exactly. "Oh, you smell really good." But you can't proactively blush. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Or That's like, how sexy sell. Like I remember, I was at a club. Uh, and this girl was standing in front of me, and she smelled fucking delicious. And I, oh, like, like a, I don't know, like a yeah, Christmas like, cookie. 
bro, I don't know what, like whatever she was wearing just smelled amazing. Ooh. And like I said, I, 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 I had to say, I had to say something. I'm just like, excuse me. Don't mean to sound creepy, but you smell fucking amazing. What is that that you're wearing? It's like, oh, thank you. It's such and such and such. Like, oh yeah, like I like, and I know it's packed in here, so I'm like, you know, kind of close on you. But it's like I get smell like you. It smells great. Like whatever that is, like use that. That like that's your scent. Yeah, that's your scent, girl. And then uh, speaking of scents, you want to come get some martinis at the bar? Nope. I left after that. Oh, you know, really? like I said that and I just and I kind of and I kind of walked away because oh, yeah. I didn't because I didn't want to I didn't want it to come up like sometimes if I want to give some if I see somebody I want to give them a compliment stuff like that which I have to do now anyways but it's like you give them a compliment and just like oh that's you know nice whatever and then you just get out of there because I don't want them to think that like I ain't trying to hit on you I'm not trying to make this a thing I just you know something happened or you know you did something or you're just yeah. who you are as a person and it's just like Here's a compliment for you, and I'm just gonna get out of here because I don't want you to feel weird. It's a beautiful thing, man. That's what I try to do. Brandon's just like, nah, man, you gotta follow up. <laughs> That's your one opportunity. Why do you always imitate me like I'm some kind of bo- black monster? Because <laughs> you, because l- listen, we we listen to you on this podcast, Brandon. <laughs> I'm fine, man. Mm-hmm. Save it. <laughs> Why did New York look like the set of Avenue Q? <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah. For a movie that probably had a huge budget. How much was the budget of this? It uh, was 78 80, million. 80 million, according to producer UBS research. And that's a shitload of money, bro. Especially in 2003. Mm-hmm. For for New York to look like this, come on, bro. Bro, I come mean, on. but if you really think about it, like this is like, this is a sh- uh, shitty bootleg version of Blade. Like that opening mm. is very Blade esque. Yeah, I mean uh, the credits are uh, rolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you know it, it's a very bootleg version of Blade. They're just like, ah, we got white people in it. This doesn't do more money. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Also, um, okay, so there's a few things I gotta get through. I had a lot of notes. And this is already going to go, this is already going long. So I'm going to try to get through these. So there's a lot of weird stuff. So Matt Murdock is essentially an alcoholic, right? Yeah. Because he comes home with that fucking, like you said, just sweating to high heaven and then mixes himself a, like a martini. Yeah. Just drinking by himself. He's already blind. It's like extra, extra lonely. And so <laughs> then you're like, okay, I don't know what's going on here. And then you have, he he's contending with these these uh villains in the shape of kingpin and bullseye who have the most homoerotic office scene yeah. when bullseye is just hanging out his chair with his legs up he and shit. somebody yeah and he's just like oh that was fun you know but i'm gonna do daredevil but i'll do the girl too and i'm yeah, like just I, I, i'll do daredevil and i'll do him for free I'm like whoa <laughs> and this is all happening while dare uh daredevil's learning about fisk um aka kingpin and he's told yeah, he's the kind of guy that'll kill your children. He'll kill everyone who ever knew you. And I'm like, by that logic, wouldn't Matt be dead? True. The but, kingpin but, was already killing people no, back in the, the day. The kingpin wasn't in charge. I mean, I would still like if I'm if I'm already doing, I'd just take the initiative and get ahead of it. Yeah, kill the kid. Yeah, you know how I like it. Kill that kid. But if you really think about it, you really think about it, Brandon. He goes. I'm going to do, like, I want the devil. I want him. I want him. I got to have him. <laughs> I like him. I want him. And I'm going to have him. <laughs> like, that's nuts. But he literally, <laughs> he said that. He's like, I'll do him. And I'm, I'll do him for free. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was some wild overriding shit. And, and then they're just, and they're just, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of uh um the the black assistant in got to the first Zoolander mm-hmm. with the milk with the yeah. milk scene. <laughs> it was just like, what is going on here? <laughs> Bro, uh, this motherfucking kingpin man, his his suspenders are just white. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he kills somebody, because like when he killed that f- fucking first security guard, like it was like that was bonkers. The look on his face and how his eyes roll by it's like yeah. he's absorbing his fucking soul through his hands. <laughs> I'm just like, what is happening right now? 
He's fucking Shao Kahn. Yeah. I was just like, the villains are really bad. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, even uh, when Bullseye is killing Electra, after he somehow slices her neck with a card, but it doesn't fully kill her yet. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like, you're good, but me, I'm magic. <laughs> just like, I hate the script. I hate everything about this. Colin Farrell was on, on, on this one. Oh, yeah. He had to be all so high. And they couldn't direct him. I because this is when Colin Farrell was blowing up. Yeah. Back in the day. And so there's like no way this this newbie direct. I mean, I don't know what uh this director's done before or uh after this, but there's no way that like yeah, he did Electra and Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. So he he didn't have the creds. Cause Colin Farrell's like, bro, I just work with Spielberg. Like, you can't tell me nothing. I'll be rubbing this head nibble and wearing <laughs> all this black leather. Just let me do my thing. Yeah. But like you said, he they all look crazy. Yeah. Hey, and this, <laughs> this is one of the worst. This is one of the worst. This is one of the why, worst films ever made. Why were there bats at that organ? There were so many bats. I'm like, what kind of church is this? <laughs> it was a foreshadowing that Ben Affleck was going to become Batman in the future. Sure. Come on, Brandon. Sure. <laughs> but imagine you're at your congregations in this church and then like that organ, because the bats are going to eventually come out. <laughs> that organ just goes up and a fucking flock of bats just come above you. <laughs> 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 fucking sister Cecilia hits the wrong chord and eh, no bats flying over. Like, ah! The whole congregation's <laughs> run out. Uh, this actually sounds hilarious. Oh, so can we talk about okay? Colin Farrell was so crazy in this movie, everybody. He was all like you said, he did a lot of coke before he did this take. He fucking is banging the organ bells, and then he says, Bring in the pain, rubs the head nipple, bring the noise. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah, he's uh, he he was really on one. He was really <laughs> fucking on one. So to c- conclude that scene. He gets thrown out of a window <laughs> from the church, which again, it seems like that organ is three to five stories high. Yes, it seems so high. He flies out the window and lands on the police car and like face into the windshield, right? The fucking um the reporter watches him hit that window and like his eyes roll into the back of his head. Seemingly, he him dead. He dead. Yeah. No, he not. But then yeah. all the police come running, gu- guns drawn, screaming, freezing shit. He he gonna be frozen for a nigga for a minute. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> like, like what are you nowhere. guys doing? <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. Come on. Yeah. But um, okay. Then we Ben Affleck's just fucking like he's just fucking going crazy at this point because Electra's dead. Um, and this is after she already fucked him up because she thought that he was for some reason her father's assassin. And then he goes to encounter Kingpin. Mind you, he clearly doesn't have a plan. And, and Kingpin's just been standing in this box. We don't even know if it's actually in a skyscraper. This nigga could have just been like in a box in the middle of the ball as an exhibit or some shit. We don't know. But um, when uh, his assistant comes up to him, he was like, "Sir, I I believe Daredevil's on his way." He's like. I was born in the Bronx, Wesley. And I was just like, shut the fuck up. Wesley, I'm black. Just send that nigga over here. <laughs> and he was smelling the roses. And, and he, he says, he sniffs a rose and then says, it's a shame you came here wounded. I was like, Matt, you about to get fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to fight you in your prime. It was like, brother, it's going to be a bad night for you. <laughs> I mean, when he slid under the, this movie actually is surprisingly pretty violent for a PG thirteen movie. Yeah, because well, between I mean, like, also Daredevil is killing people. Yeah, and then also Bullseye is killing people, and he's fucking like being kind of brutal with it. And then when Daredevil fucking snaps Kingpin Kingpin's uh, legs back, yeah. that's such a violent sound. I was like Jesus, and then Michael Clark does it's just like. In the water, like splash him, say, like, "I'm gonna get you, <laughs> I'm gonna get you." I was like, "This is so insane!" Jingalang, 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 jingalang. <laughs> well, uh, but Joe here's Bentley. the thing that bothered me. <laughs> yeah. This is this is what bothered me. Daredevil lets fucking uh, Kingpin uh, live. Yes, 
Now, mind you, he he let a dude get sliced in half by a train, and because that guy assaulted a prostitute, right? Yep. But he won't kill the guy who killed his father, and as far as he knows, killed the woman that he loved. My granted, he just met her four days ago, but he wouldn't kill him for that. Well, remember, it's because after he has that earlier encounter where the kid, you know, he beats up the one dude in the, uh, in the apartment mm-hmm. and the kid's scared of him. He's like, I'm not I'm not the bad guy. Yeah. And then like, that's that's why he doesn't do it. Yeah. Because it's like, trash. I'm not the bad guy. By the way, everybody knows that fucking Daredevil's Matt Murdock in this movie. Yeah. His mask comes off all the time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And he's blind, so you can't like immediately put it back on. He's got to find the motherfucker. <laughs> when Electra takes it off, he's sitting there like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes just rolling all back, all glistening and shit. She's like, Matt, oh, oh. He was like, why didn't she kill him then? Mm-hmm. He's like, I would never try to kill your father. <laughs> well, stop it. So, folks, as you can tell, we have uh, very, very uh, negative feelings about this movie, but we did ask some of our patriots for their thoughts. And remember, folks, if you sign up at Patreon at patreon.com slash mini you you guaranteed to have your thoughts and reviews of that film read on that episode. So mm-hmm. first up, we have Sean T, who wrote ass. Sid Tobias wrote Colin Farrell really bounced back from this performance. LOL. Best part of this trash movie. Jeffrey McKinney wrote. Hopefully you'll watch the director's cut. It is so much better. So much potential. Don't know why the theatrical release failed. Do you think that the... No, no. Seen... It's not that much better. Okay. <laughs> it's not that much better. Chrissy W. wrote, I remember really not liking this. And then Simba Jackson wrote, you have to watch the director's edition. Gives more context to confusing plot holes as well as more screen time for my Uncle Coolio. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie had like random, like like Coolio, Kevin Smith. Yeah, I mean, John Favreau wasn't really a, like a star at that time, so that doesn't yeah. count. Um, Justin, break down our rate system, baby. Stop calling me, baby. So, guys, we rate movies bags of popcorn, small, medium, large, and the XL for the exceptional. If a film doesn't deserve any popcorn, we throw it into the dog shit pile, but we pile piles and piles of dog shit on top of it. So, guys, we sat down, we watched the 2003 film Daredevil, starring Ben Affleck, Jennifer yeah. Gardner, Michael Duncan, uh, I'm sorry, Marco, Michael Clark <laughs> Michael Duncan. Ruse. I know. <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan, a.k.a. Green Mile. Colin Farrow and uh, John Favreau. Um, who else is in it? It doesn't matter. Uh, what say you, Brandon? Oh, boy. Yeah, this gets to three piles of dog shit. 2003. This gets three piles. It's, uh, okay. it's bad. It's, it's, it's rough. The only reason why it gets as few piles of dog shit as it did it's because it brings back a little nostalgia because I remember first seeing this movie in the theater and thinking it was crazy back then and those feelings resurfacing right when I started watching this again. Um, yeah, because I have no idea what the direction was. It, tonally, it's all over the place. Ben Affleck's performance, you match up Ben Affleck with Colin Farrell and these two are fucked up for completely different reasons. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Affleck was drinking heavily on the set of this movie and Colin Farrell was doing the uppers with the cocaine and shit. <laughs> it's ins- like their energy in the same movie is so insane. And again, they just had Colin Farrell doing crazy shit as bullseye. That wasn't even fun. Like when he does catch all that glass, just flat put it on his hands. I was like, come on guys. Yeah, he like, would just like, be flesh and bone at this point. Guys, like, please help us try to like this movie. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good at all. Justin, what's your rating? I'm going to give... So this movie at the box office brought in $179.2 million. I'm going to give this $179.2 million piles <laughs> of dog shit. This was fucking brutal to get through. Most of the time watching this, I was just like, wait, what? What's What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was just in an utter state of confusion throughout most of this film. It doesn't make any sense. It's terribly acted. The action is fucking garbage. Uh, and um, the only thing that came that uh, 
the only good that came out of this uh, film was the fact that Jennifer Gardner and Ben Affleck got to ha- get together and actually have uh, a yeah. child together. So that's the only that good children thing. together. Yeah, they're children together. So that's yeah. only good that came of this. But like other than that, this movie is a piece of trash. Piece of trash. Piece of trash. Should never be seen ever again. There you have it, everybody. Medium popcorn. We finally did it. Daredevil 2003. One of the Save worst. Me. <laughs> one of the worst superhero movies ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that nigga looked like the red tin man. Like he looked crazy. So, all right. And you know, and you said the worst superhero movie ever. It's, no, no, it's one of them. It's one. Yeah, no, I know it's one of them, but like it's this is up there, and and like, and so is um Oh my God, Green Lantern. Yes, yeah, Green Lantern is really bad. And I don't, I don't know which one is worse. Because after watching this, I'm just like, oh man. Oh no, but I, I know that uh, Green Lantern is pretty bad. Green Lantern is really bad, but I still think X Men: The Last Stand might be the worst. Mm. Yeah, because it was just is, so egregious in how it handled certain things. But this is the thing, though. X Men: Last Stand, they at least had some cool parts. This didn't have any cool parts in it. Oh, also, no. like Green Lantern, I remember that one being pretty bad because it was like there was nothing that was salvageable uh, in that film. X Men mm-hmm. Last Stand, at least those characters we cared about at this point, Daredevil was pretty obscure, especially to most uh, fans of comics. Uh, I mean, yeah. he was known, but like also just like not really. And then Green Lantern, you know, again, known. But, you know, people didn't necessarily care about him as, as far as like D list or, you know, characters. X-Men at least was like A-list characters. Yeah. You're right. It's bad, but I, I'm not saying it's not. It's, it's I a, still it's don't think it's Daredevil or Green Lantern. I think there's, I think we're forgetting some folks call in. Let us know what, what, what we're missing here with the worst superhero movies ever at 347-508-0978. Yeah. We want to mm. hear your thoughts. Um, or if you think that it is Green Lantern or Daredevil, but call us, call in, we'll uh, listen to the voicemails and debate. Yes, indeed. Keep it going. But uh, Justin, tell the people how they can follow you and support the show financially if they choose to do so. Guys, you can follow me at Jay Brown Did It on the socials. But if you'd like to support this show further, other than just listening every week, you can go to patreon.com slash medium popcorn. We have $2, $5, $10, and $15 packages. Our backlog goes on the Patreon. Our uh, bonus episodes, Patreon, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you know, just uh, the, our small mini shows. There's so much stuff on Patreon, and that's where you guys need to be. So please Take yourself over to patreon.com slash medium popcorn, sign on up, and Idris is going to shout you out. Brandon? That's right. And folks, you can follow me at American Collins and all the social media platforms, including threads. And uh, what's the what's the other one I just joined? I just fucking joined this. Uh, Spill. I just joined it. Not okay. Well, yeah, you, know, you remember you're supposed to send me an invite, nigga. So just saying. Did you ask me for an invite? Yes. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I'll, you, I'll, you send sorry. You. I'll send you one. I'll send you one. Yeah. It's fun over here. It's fun. But um, folks, I got some shows coming up, so get those tickets at AmericanCollins.com. Uh, shows August, uh, July, September, all that good stuff. So come and get that buttery goodness. And remember, leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast application or a comment on our podcast on Spotify. We'll also read those uh, going forward on the show. So uh, we hope you all uh, enjoy this episode, and we'll talk to you soon. Mm. Save me!